Hi everyone, this will be our first math review video of the year. Uh, thanks for taking the time to take a look at it. Um, I recommend watching these videos as a family, uh, stopping and rewinding any time that you're confused about something, and talking about it together to make sure that everybody in the family understands as you go along. So our first topic in math this year is connecting the second grade topic of repeated addition with multiplication. So what I've drawn here is three groups of two triangles and we could find out the total number of triangles through repeated addition. This is 2 plus 2 plus 2. Now I'm sure that most of you right away recognized this as 6. But the point isn't that the math here is difficult, but that we're learning a new way to think about something. And you'll have that experience many times this year, where something seems really easy at first, but we use it to understand a more complicated topic. So whenever that happens, uh, be patient, pay attention, and things will be clear eventually about why we're doing it that way. Now there's another way to think about this other than repeated addition. Um, we have here three groups of two. And three groups of two is really saying that there is two three times. So we write that three times two. And, or just simply use the multiplication symbol, three times two. And these all mean the same thing. Um, so we know that 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 6. So that's 3 times 2, and it equals 6. Now, there can be a little wrinkle. Uh, let's take a look at something that looks similar, but it's not exactly the same. At first glance here, it might look like we're looking at the same thing. I see three groups, but something's changed. Do you notice what it is? The groups are not equal. Look at this last group. We have two groups of two, and then just a group of one. We cannot use multiplication in this case, because look, we have two plus two plus one. We cannot use multiplication here. This equals five. And if we compare that with the last one we looked at, we notice in the last one that all three groups were the same size. They were all equal. Multiplication only works in that case. It doesn't work if one of the groups is different from the others. Now, we could use multiplication with a smaller part of it where they are equal, but that's beyond the scope of what we're doing right now. Um, so let's take a look at another kind of problem. Here again, we have equal sized groups. We have four groups of three here. Um, so we could use repeated addition to add them up. We have three plus three plus three plus three like this. And we can either use skip counting by threes or we could count them all up. Let's skip count. 3, 6, 9, 12. So that equals 12. So what I've learned here is that 4 groups of 3 equals 12. And we can write that as 4 times 3 equals 12. But there's a very powerful strategy that I could use first to help me see this. So I have my four groups of three again. Now, I could rearrange these groups of three into what's called an array. I could take each group of three and turn it into a row in an, an array. An array is simply a, um, a group of objects arranged into rows and columns. So what I did there is I took the items from this first group and put them into the first row of the array. And I'm going to do that for each one. So second one, third one, fourth one. Now I'll, I'll draw some arrows to help you make sense of this. That one went here. That one went here, and this one went down here. So you see that each group of three got translated into a row in the array. I, I have the, the exact same number of um, objects here, 
but they're a little easier to see. And so you notice that I have a 4x3 array, that I still have four groups, one, two, three, four. In fact, sometimes it can be helpful to, when you're looking at an array, to circle the rows like that. That might help you see that there are four groups. Again, we have four groups of three, which we can write as four times three. And we just proved with repeated addition that that equals 12. A lot of what we do in math is going to be about proving why things are true. And whenever you look at a problem, even if it's something you've already memorized, you should be able to prove why it works the way that it does. You can take this a step further. Um, yesterday we talked about how there are 15 students in the class and that we can take those 15 students and divide them into groups. We divided them into five equal groups. So what the class ended up looking like was that we had, I'm going to make a red circle for each student. Oh, I just made a mistake. We had three in each group. And each group was standing separately. Now, we can express the, this in the following way. We said that we had five groups, and there were three in each group, and that there were 15 in all. So let's break apart this number sentence, this multiplication expression. This first factor, remember that these two numbers are called factors the numbers that we are multiplying together. They're each called a factor. That first factor refers to the number of groups. The second factor is the size of the groups. The product, which is what the answer is called, is the total. So Everything in that multiplication expression has a very specific meaning. Um, we can show this in another way, too, that we talked about. That was the number bond. Number bond looks like this. In the middle, we have the total. And then we have each group as a part. Like this. Now, you might notice that this looks an awful lot like where we started with repeated addition. And, and it does. We have five parts. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four. That's four. Five. And each part is worth three. So we have three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Now let's prove that it works. Let's skip count, count by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. So again, we've represented... 5 times 3, another way. So to flash back to our initial example with the students, we have 5 groups. Each group has a size of 3, which we represent as 5 times 3. And there are 15 students altogether. So to flash back to our first example, we have 5 groups of students. Each group has a size of 3 which we can represent as 5 times 3. And there are 15 students altogether. Let's do a practice problem. So let's say there are... Well, let's look at this problem here. Um, it says there are blank origin, oranges in each basket. How many oranges are there in six baskets? So let's take a look. We have our little baskets here. And there are four oranges in each basket. Now, what's our number of groups? Well, here the number of groups is referring to the number of baskets. So we have six groups. What's the size of each group? That's asking us how many oranges are in each basket. All right, the size of our group is four. So the multiplication expression here is six times four. Now, what is six times four? You have a couple of different strategies. Maybe you've already memorized six times four. You could count up each 
orange that you see there, or you can skip count by fours because there's four in each group. I'm going to skip count by fours. I like that. Now, if I don't feel confident, I'm going to show you a strategy that I can use to help me as I'm skip counting by fours. I'm going to write down the number for each one. So that's one, two, three, four. Now I see another four here. That brings me to eight. Another four. Now we're crossing the ten, so this might be a little harder. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The next one is sixteen, then twenty, then twenty-four. Use whatever strategy works for you. The important thing in math is that you're accurate. Um, and you'll learn how to be quicker over time. So 6 times 4 is 24. So there are 24 oranges all together. Because remember that, that product, that last number there that we multiply and get, this one here, that is our total. So we have the number of groups, the size of the groups, and a total. Um, so there are 24 oranges all together. Um, Let's do one more. Try number four here as a family. Pause the video for a minute. See if you can figure it out. Um, if you get stuck, come back and we'll go through it together. Okay, let's see how you did. There are blank peppers in each row. How many peppers are in six rows? So, well, I see one, two, three peppers in each row. There are, what, how many rows are there? Well, look, counting down, I see six rows. Each row has three in it, so we are talking about six times three, and if you skip counted by threes, you'll find out that that equals 18. So there are 18 peppers all together. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have questions, uh, please ask me them, and I'll do my best to help you. Have a good night.